For all of you who love nothing more than building wasteland settlements, this is the build for you. If you enjoy my builds and want them to continue, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. In addition, consider not only liking the video, but also sharing it too, as this really helps to draw new people into the channel, and significantly improves how well the video performs. The Emperor has Strength 5, Perception 1, Endurance 6, Charisma 8, Intelligence 7, Agility 1, and a Luck of 1. A Strength of 5 will help out mostly with carry capacity, we want to be picking up nearly all the junk we find, and don't want to be forced to leave anything behind. Perception is perfectly fine as a dump stat for this build. We in no way rely on being a precise shot, and our points are better spent elsewhere. Endurance is sat at a healthy 6. Although not essential, I much preferred playing this build with a decent number of hit points, as I didn't want to be too easy to kill whilst out looting. Charisma is our highest stat at 8. This will reduce prices, raise the settler cap on your settlements, and give access to a ton of useful perks for the character. Our next highest stat is Intelligence, which sits at 7 points. This will help us level a little faster, and also gives us a bunch of useful perks to make our settlements a little more high-tech if we so wish. Agility and Luck are both dump stats sitting at 1. We won't particularly need either for the build, so it's not a great loss. The essential perks for this build are Local Leader, Cap Collector, Science and Gunslinger. Local Leader is absolutely critical to any settlement build. It will let you set up supply lights to connect everything together, stopping you from having to travel between your different settlements so often. It also lets you build various crafting stations, letting you have any workbench you need in any settlement of your choosing. The Cap Collector perk will make buying and selling a lot better for you and is great for speeding up the process at which you can build your settlements. You're probably going to want to buy a lot of junk shipments over the course of a game, so make sure they're as cheap as possible. This perk also lets you build some of the better trading shops in your own settlements, stopping you from having to go to Diamond City whenever you need anything. The Science perk is the best of the crafting perks for a settlement-based build, as so many different things you can build require science. Not only will this let you build better generators and water purifiers, but it still is a good perk to have for weapon and armor modding. Last of all in the essential perks is Gunslinger. We're going to need to get involved in a few fights over the course of our game, and I decided to go with pistols as my weapon of choice. They're nice and light and offer a good variety, but honestly, you could go for Rifleman instead if you really wanted to. The recommended perks I've included for the character are Heavy Gunner, Armorer, Scrapper, Strongback, and Fortune Finder. To add some more variety to your weapons, and to help you pack more of a punch, I decided to go for the Heavy Gunner perks. These are going to be most helpful for when you're fighting incredibly powerful enemies such as my alert queens, as your pistols probably won't work quite as well as a missile launcher. The Armourer perk will let us mod out armour. Not only does this mean our own armour is going to do a decent job of keeping us alive, but it also means that we can modify the armour we give to our companions, helping them to stay in the fight. Scrapper is a great perk for getting rare junk with ease. Make sure to pick up weapons and armour as well as junk when out looting, and you will find yourself almost never running short of the rarer materials. The added rank letting you get more from scrapping also works for the build screen, meaning you get even more from clearing space in your settlements. Strongback is going to make looting far easier. No longer will we have to manage our carry capacity and drop precious junk so that we can go back to base. Instead, with this perk, we will be able to fast travel when over-encumbered, meaning we never have to leave anything behind. Last and recommended is Fortune Finder. When you're looting locations for junk, you'll be wanting to search through various containers, and with the Fortune Finder perk, you'll also be finding bottle caps at the same time, keeping your money reserves high, despite how much buying you will likely do. The role-playing perks of a build are Robotics Expert, Inspirational, Animal Friend, and Wasteland Whisperer. Robotics Expert gives a lot more variety for your settlements, providing you have the Automatron DLC. If you don't have that DLC, then don't worry about this perk. If you do though, then this means you can build various robots which you can have in your settlements and assign to different jobs. I wouldn't advise creating too many different robots, but they do work really well as provisioners, and you can customise them with different colours depending on their job or to correlate to their route. These perks also mean but if you decide to travel with a robotic companion, you can customise them to your heart's content, making them far, far more powerful. 
To this extent, we also have the Inspirational perk. The ranks of this not only make your companion more effective in combat, but will also boost their carry capacity, letting you use them as your own personal pack mule. Animal Friend and Wasteland Whisperer can lead to you having even more creatures following you around, but I included them in this build for anyone wishing to add peaceful beasts to their settlements. There is something really nice about having a settlement that's filled with death claws, prowling around and making any raiders think twice about attacking. Obviously, these perks aren't essential, but if you want Deathclaw Guardians for your settlements, then you'll probably want to grab these at some point. Unlike most of my recent characters, the Emperor didn't start life in some horrible place filled with suffering and negligence, but was instead raised in a loving family and had a good childhood. He was well educated and had his creativity nourished. He always loved to build things, and decided to go into construction after he left school. The jobs he had within the industry weren't anything particularly special, but they paid well enough for him to get by, and he was happy with his life. In time, he even fell in love and got married, living in a suburb within Boston, and waking up every day with a smile on his face. His happy days didn't last forever though, as he was conscripted into the army and forced to fight against the Chinese forces on the front lines. Although originally trained as an infantryman, he was transferred over into the armor division and became a part of a tank crew. At first he was glad of this, knowing that he would be better protected from small arms fire. What he found though was that the other crewmen of the tank weren't on the same wavelength as he was. The man in charge of a tank seemed to be a madman, gleefully giggling whenever the guns were fired and seemingly seeking out soldiers to run over. Over the course of his tour of duty, the Emperor saw countless men die, both friends and enemies, and by the end of it, he struggled to see the distinction between the two. To him, every individual mattered, and he knew that they had lives, hopes, dreams, maybe even a family waiting for them back at home. This fact caused him to leave the army at the earliest possible opportunity. He had no desire to kill people, and felt that the war was a pointless endeavour that would achieve nothing other than ending lives. When he returns home, he has trouble sleeping. No longer does he wake with a smile on his face, but instead can't sleep at night, seeing the faces of dying men whenever he closes his eyes. Fortunately, he has a loving wife and a caring family that help him deal with the trauma of what he has seen, and although his life never goes back to the way it was, he does find the days become slightly easier as time goes on. Eventually, he even has a son, and works tirelessly to make sure the world is a better place for him, and hoping that he will get to raise him to be a good person, who values the sanctity of every life. Unsurprisingly, this character will be siding with the Minutemen. As the settlement-based faction of the game, their quests won't be as annoying to complete, as you will be seeking out settlements anyway. Obviously, there are also the Nuka World Raiders who you could side with, but it's a very different settlement system, and for a dedicated settlement build, I feel the standard system is better. That being said, you can choose to join them if you really want to. The Wastes are a hard place, and the Emperor may decide that it's better to be in charge of the Raiders, instead of being constantly attacked by them. The Emperor can use any companion you want. Whichever is your favourite, you can use as your main one. I do however advise recruiting all of the different companions, and trying to make sure you don't fall out with any of them. The best way to ensure this is to spend some time travelling with each of them, and completing actions that they like ensuring that the odd disliked action you may take in your settlement doesn't cause them to abandon you forever. You may well have noticed at this point that the Emperor is wearing a fairly ramshackle set of armour, and a strange variety of different weapons. This is because there aren't any specific weapons or pieces of armour that you have to wear when playing as this build. Instead, focus on making the character look powerful and inspirational, with different gear you have and give any really good legendary pieces to your followers, to make them more powerful. That being said, Reginald Suit is a really good item to get your hands on if you want to make bartering even better, as a plus 3 charisma boost goes a long way to making some extra caps. Although your weapons will be semi-random, I do suggest getting Old Faithful from Oturio in Diamond City, and modding it out as a beam splitter pistol. This works really well as a pistol variant of a shotgun, and is good for dealing with enemies that get up close and personal. In addition, thanks to the science perks, you can mod out plasma and laser weapons with anything you want, letting them fulfil a variety of different roles. 
don't forget to get your hands on a few heavy weapons too. I'd suggest either a Fat Man or a Missile Launcher for fighting off any monstrous enemies you come across. I would also recommend building yourself several suits of power armour, and to make one of them a looting suit, maxing out carrying capacity by adding motion assist servos and calibrated shocks. This suit will be invaluable for doing long looting runs, where you want to keep moving at a decent speed without having to be fussy about what you're picking up. Focus on getting every single settlement under your control and on your side. You can build up all of these as amazing settlements with great depth, or you can do what I did and use most of them to draw in settlers and supplies, which can be sent to your main settlements, which I would advise limiting to 3 or 4 in the Commonwealth. Don't forget that the DLCs add in a few extra settlements that you can use as you see fit, but which still can be tied into your supply lines. Really have fun with the settlements that you do create. For me personally, I wanted to make different themed settlements. Maybe Sanctuary Hills is this huge trading hub with tons of different shops, the castle is a military base with a ton of Minutemen soldiers, and I'd even like to build stronger fortress somewhere, with plenty of gore bags and raider spikes. It's in pretty stark contrast to some of the other settlements, but it will work well as an intimidation tactic if nothing else. Obviously you won't be spending all of your time just building settlements, and will likely find yourself in the old combat scenario. In these situations, focus on letting your companions do a large amount of the fighting for you. If you've given them decent equipment, then they should be able to hold their own, and you can just support them with your various pistols. If you do come across a real challenge, then you can just pull out your heavy weapon of choice. For me it's a missile launcher, but let me know in the comments what you plan on carrying around with you as your big guns. Thank you all for watching this latest Fallout 4 build, and a bit of a different one for me. Due to the nature of the build, it's taken me a really long time to make this one, and I've spent nowhere near as much time in the game as I would have liked to. So please leave a like just to show you appreciate the fact that I spent time on actually making the build instead of building a dozen different diners for my settlers. I have no doubt in my mind that this build will be the one I go back to if I play Fallout again purely for fun, at a leisurely pace, as the settlement system really adds something nice to the game for a more relaxed playstyle, but doesn't force you to go around on a slaughter fest all the time. As always though, if you want something else to watch right now, then click on one of the on-screen links.